Greetings, ladies and men and gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called We Must Find the Human Homeworld, written by Mostly Wicked. We must find the human homeworld, First Claw Carrerum said. This is out our priority for this mission. Astronauts, nothing is more important. Everything, everything depends on our success. He paced up and down the neat rows of green, literally and figuratively, astronauts, his foot claws clicking on the human bone floor. Oh, cult lord, save us, he thought. This bunch of even younger than the last. Some of these teeth spawn had mere tiny buds in place of their upper tusks, for crying out loud. They couldn't be more than 3,000 swamp cycles old, maybe 3,200 at the most. Everything depends on our success, his voice boomed, and you will succeed, even though dozens of expeditions before you have failed. Do you know why? He made a theatrical pause. Because this time I will be going with you. My days as an instructor are over, and I am sick and tired of losing perfectly good teeth spawn that used to be my cadets to the hostile void of space. This time I will make sure personally that the job is done right. For the glory of the cult lords. For the glory of the cult lords, the bunch echoed loudly. Now, he stopped pacing and stared at the young, wart-faced third-class tusk whose eye stalks trembled in fear. Let's see what they teach you in Space Academy these days. Third Tusk, why do you need to find the human homeworld? <laughs> because of the famine, Sir Claw. A very generic answer, Tusk. Uh, um, uh, the food shortage is because the humans are, um... Because the humans are, um... Grim, mocked the hapless Tootspawn. What does that even mean? Anyone want to explain this to this clawless whelp? Why our civilization is starving? Uh, I can, first claw. A confident voice from the third row. Now that was more like it. The second tooth clearly had some experience. A volunteer, probably. A very rare treat indeed. The vast majority of astronauts were, obviously, gang-pressed. Go on, second tooth. Uh, yes, sir. After thousands of years of uh, selective breeding, the human genetic stock grows um, then In breeding is decimating the human population. Entire farms are closing down because they can't breed humans at all anymore. Uh, at least not healthy ones. I, I hear they have to supplement by catching uh, wild humans in cities. Good answer, Second Tooth, but don't fall prey to the rumors. Grarum admonished. We don't eat wild humans. We exterminate them and their nests on sight. They're filthy and carry diseases. Everyone knew that messing with the wild human meat was dangerous. That's how you contracted blood fever or eye pop. Besides, wild humans were stringy and tasted bitter. Every morning was taught a cycle or two after swimming out of the birth swamp. If the food speaks to you, call on a grown-up immediately. If it's trying to trick you, Proper domesticated food humans had their vocal cords surgically removed as pups. Any farm manager caught mixing with domesticated and wild human flesh will surely be brought before the cult lords for judgment and damnation. Now, who can tell me how we're going to find the human homeworld other than the second tooth, who obviously knows the answer? Um, sir? A young first tusk carefully ventured. Uh, I can try if you permit. Uh, go ahead, Tusk. Eternal praise and gratitude to you, Sir Claw. The two spawn bowed and scraped. When I was but a spawnling, my broodmaster was always said that humans came from a world thousands of years ago on spaceships of their own. As hard as that is to believe, in an ancient era before they became our almost exclusive food source, these uh, spaceships, so he said, were preserved in the deepest catacombs of the Black Palace. When the cult lords led us to the technological revolution, the newly minted silicon masters examined the ancient wrecks and managed to retrieve a very partial and corrupted data on the location of the human homeworld. That was about 2,000 swamp cycles ago. That is all correct. Good job, First Tusk. At least some of you 
have a bit of brains between your auditory spines. Now, let me tell you why this mission is so important. You already know that the famine has devastated many broods for many years in swamp cycles. The inbred humans are hopeless. The cult lords have decreed many experiments, but so far, none have succeeded. Gene therapy didn't work. Wild humans are of the same genetic stock, so breeding them with domesticated humans hadn't worked either. Experiments with vac grown human meat are going too slowly to save us in time, and so it removes the thrill of the kill so many would say is worse than dying in any case. The astronauts nodded their eye stalks grimly. They knew all about that. They got used to frozen human meat as part of their training. Live humans weren't permitted on spaceships because their life support systems would get overstressed. But if we find the human homeworld, the source of the plentiful, tender, fatty meat that had allowed our ancestors to stop relying on hunting wild beasts and ensured our great civilization, led by the great and unfallible cult lords, could expand. Stocks of millions upon millions of soft, weak, warm, meaty humans, neither touched by inbreeding nor infected by the illnesses that can affect teeth spawn. Imagine an entire planet of full of humans. If a handful of spaceships jump-started teeth spawn civilization and allowed us to become the masters of the planet, then a planet full of them will let us become masters of the galaxy. This small space program would become as nothing before the great fleets that our blessed and merciful cult lords would assemble. Nothing would stand before us forever and evermore. He stopped and took a ragged breath. Sometimes when he got going, he overdid it a bit, but that was fine. He could see that the idea touched something in the ranks of the teeth spawn. The yellow eye slits on the ends of their gently swaying stalks were dilated with ecstasy. You brought them up, Kororam, you old beast, he thought to himself. Now it is time to crash them back down to reality. This group, the group that will find the human homeworld, will be the 72nd to ascend to space since the Coast Lords have decreed the establishment of the space program. This was a good way to sift out the smart ones and the chaff. He examined his astronauts carefully. Some remained swaying in a happy trance. But a few, maybe one in five, got the implications and immediately sobered up, their eye stalks stiffening. I'm disappointed that so few of you uh, understand the implications of my words just now. It is true indeed that the very best of us have perished in the first wave. And all that's left now is you. Utter trash. The cult lords must be desperate. He stopped the heretical thought before it could fully fall. The cult lords were never wrong, doubting that that was a fast ticket into a meat processing plants as the product. With the famine kicking into high gear, the cult and forces were looking for more and more flimsy excuses to send wicked toothspawn onto the dinner plates of their betters. One less mouth to feed, one more meal guaranteed to a more deserving member of the cult society. 71 expeditions to the human homeworld, none were ever heard from again. They always disappear without a trace. Well, sometimes we do get a brief but confused reports. He clicked a claw on the wall panel and a monitor lit up and started playing a video. This, my dear cannon father, had been received from the 6th expedition right before they lost contact. Confused flashing images showed a spaceship's corridors and lots of tooth spawn screaming. The footage was only a few seconds long. This is from the 33rd expedition. A tooth spawn, clearly young, although not as young as some of the ones watching, appeared on the screen. It was barely visible in the dim light and its face was very close to the camera. It was clearly filming itself on a handheld device. No, cult lords, please preserve us. It's coming for me. The tooth spawn on the screen sobbed and shuddered, a strange high-pitched buzzing sound, somewhat like the screams of dying grubs, was getting louder in the background as the video played. Save me, merciful cult lords, save me. The video abruptly cut off. Makes an impression on you, doesn't it? Kareram said. There wasn't even a click of mandibles as all the astronauts looked shocked. 
They don't talk about it in the Academy. It's a cult secret. You're only allowed to view it right before launch time. Now, for the message from the 59th Expedition, this one is text only, no video, no sound. The screen now displayed a simple text message. Timestamp, launch plus 15 swamp cycles. No sign of human homeworld in candidate system 554FB. At first, it appeared completely barren and lifeless. But for the past two swamp cycles, something has been stalking us. We only get the occasional radar reflection, just enough to tell us that there's something huge out there. But it's never enough to give us an exact location, shape, or other details. When we first spotted it, we used radar Doppler effect to estimate the distance at around 30 clips. But last time it happened, just a half swamp cycle ago, the reading said 15. The crew is getting jumpy. Next time the radar spots it, we'll try to take a visual image and we'll update you. Expedition leader First Claw scrapped it out. Of course, we didn't get any other update after that, nor any other sign that they were alive. Kororum said, here's the final one. From the 71st expedition, no video, no sound. Only a single frame got through this time. The screen lit up yet again. It showed a bridge of a ship with a panicked-looking teethspawn crew frozen in the middle of a bustling activity. And on the monitor in the corner, barely visible on the screen on a screen, a chilling image that curdled the blood sap of every toothspawn watching, incredulous in the room. A black background of stars and a single oily deformed tentacle like that of an unfathomable sea creature extending towards the camera. Yeah, the first claw let the image speak for itself. We've taken to calling it the Kraken since then. It, Sir Claw? A trembling astronaut asked. Yes, the tusk. It, the alien, the monster, the Kraken, the malevolent slimy tentacled thing that hunts our kind in the eternal night. We don't know if it's just one or if it's an entire alien race, all we know is that the cult lords blessed be their holy mandibles invested tremendous effort and resources into a space program. And so far, this mysterious enemy has made it all go to waste. Well, no more, I say. Brave teeth spawn. We put an end to the failure and disgrace of the space program today. The ship we'll be crewing is the most advanced that we've produced yet. Its communication systems are the most sophisticated, its weapons are the most potent, and me, the expedition leader, is the most experienced out of them all. I swear in the cult lord's name that we'll defeat the Kraken and find the human source of food our grubs and spawnlings are waiting for. The other T-spawn applauded loudly by clicking their mandibles together. They boarded the ship, took their positions, and launched shortly thereafter. Hey, Munro, wake the hell up! Bull tossed the stub of his cigar at Munro's head and immediately lit up a new one. Even though he was on his third lung transplant, he didn't want to quit smoking cigars. He enjoyed every minute of it. So what if some people found it disgusting? They'll cope. So what if the regulations didn't allow smoking on the job or on a spaceship? His superiors would never know. So what if it gave you cancer? Modern medicine could handle that easily. Every problem had a reasonable solution. Uh, 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 what? Who? Monroe jerked awake. Wake up! We have a scanner hit. I've turned stealth mode on already. Do your job and identify it. Uh, you don't have to be an a-hole about it, Bill. Monroe said, putting his seat in upward position and swiveling around towards sensor console. We've been patrolling this butt end of nowhere for almost a week. Don't you tell me to knock it off when we finally find something interesting to do. So, what about that ship? Um, Monroe said. Uh, it's the flesh-eating bastards. A few years ago, a freighter had stumbled on a promoted spaceship from some yet undiscovered alien race. The ship tried to attack without provocation, so the freighter's fighter escort blew it up. They later brought what remains they could gather to Tau Seti, where the Navy analysts tried to gather as much information about this new and seemingly aggressive alien species as they could. That's when they discovered the remains of an unmistakably human flesh. It was stored, sliced up, and in a cooled container that survived the blast. At first, the mystery had baffled the experts, and the media couldn't stop talking about it for months. Eventually, some historian had dug up an ancient archive from a pre-FTL spaceflight era and found out an independent, privately owned generation ship had set on a journey towards that general region of space, and wasn't heard from since. 
Now, it appeared that its fate was self-explanatory. Human patrols have encountered many of the alien ships since then, and had orders to blow them up on sight. Well, that, and a certain other order. Scanners show a bit, a bit better armored this time, but I don't see anything that can get through our shields. Are we boarding? Monroe nodded towards the power armor hanging on the far wall of the cabin, the huge servo motors on its shoulders glistening with fresh oil. Or do we just want to blow them up? Blow them up! Got it. Ready to activate jamming when we get in range. The patrol ship haymaker turned towards its quarry, its plasma gun ports glistening menacingly in the faint sunlight. As it swung around, the light illuminated the painting on the side of the identified it as part of the 11th Xenobusters fleet. It was a cartoon alien, with a huge toothy maw and a single red eye and slimy tentacles waving around it, with a red crosshair painted over it. Oh, Monroe, try to fix its vector before you destroy it, Bill said. We need to trace its origin. Orders. I know, Monroe nodded gravely. We must find the Xeno homeworld. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catull, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.